Algeria, officially the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria, is a country in the Maghreb region of North Africa. The capital and most populous city is Algiers, located in the far north of the country on the Mediterranean coast. With an area of 2,381,741 square kilometers, Algeria is the 10th largest country in the world and the largest by area in the African Union and the Arab world. With an estimated population of over 44 million, it is the ninth most populous country in Africa. Algeria is bordered to the northeast by Tunisia, to the east by Libya, to the southeast by Niger, to the southwest by Mali, Mauritania, and the Western Saharan Territory, to the west by Morocco, and to the north by the Mediterranean Sea. The country has a semi-arid geography, with most of the population living in the fertile north, and the Sahara dominating the geography of the south. This arid geography makes the country very vulnerable to climate change. Algeria has a semi-presidential republic, with local constituencies consisting of 58 provinces and 1,541 communes. Algeria is a regional and middle power. It has the highest human development index of all non-island African countries and one of the largest economies on the continent, based largely on energy exports. Algeria has the 16th largest oil reserves in the world and the second largest in Africa, while it has the ninth largest reserves of natural gas. Sonatrach, the national oil company, is the largest company in Africa, supplying large amounts of natural gas to Europe. Algeria has one of the largest militaries in Africa and the largest defense budget. It is a member of the African Union, the Arab League, OPEC, the United Nations, and the Arab Maghreb Union, of which it is a founding member. Before we go further to discover the people, cultures, geography, and lots more of Algeria, permit me welcome you to Positive Africa if you are new. Here on this channel, our core focus is to showcase the positive face of Africa out to the entire world by means of information and education. Consider subscribing and turning on the post notification bell so you never miss out on any of our videos. Brief History of Algeria In ancient times Algeria was known as Numidia. The Numidians were known for their army which rode horses, or cavalry. Later they were called the Berbers. Being on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, the land of Algeria was part of some of the great Mediterranean empires over the course of history. The land was once under the rule of the powerful empire of Carthage, but was later conquered by the Roman Republic and the Roman Empire. In the 8th century, the Arabs arrived and many Armenians converted to the religion of Islam. Parts of the region managed to maintain their independence for periods of time, but the great empires of the Mediterranean were an important part of the Algerian history. During the Middle Ages, Algeria was led by various tribes and Berber dynasties. In the 1500s, the Spanish Empire arrived and took over several cities and settlements. The Ottoman Empire intervened and soon Algeria became part of the Ottoman Empire. In the 1800s the French invaded Algeria. The battle was brutal and the population of the country declined. However, many French came to settle in Algeria. France ruled most of Algeria until the 1900s. In the mid-1900s the Algerians began to rebel against French rule. The National Liberation Front FLN was formed in 1954 and began to fight France. In 1962, Algeria gained its independence and over one million French fled the country. For many years after, the country was ruled by a single socialist party that was almost a dictatorship. In the 1990s there was a civil war in Algeria. Today there are still many protests in the country with people wanting freedom of speech and improved living conditions. Northern Algeria lies within the temperate zone, and its climate is similar to that of other Mediterranean countries, although the diversity of the relief provides sharp contrasts in temperature. The coastal region has a pleasant climate, 
with winter temperatures averaging from 10 degrees to 12 degrees Celsius, and average summer temperatures ranging from 24 degrees to 26 degrees Celsius. Rainfall in this region is abundant, 38 to 69 centimeters per year, and up to 100 centimeters in the eastern part except in the area around Iran, where mountains form a barrier against rain-carrying winds. When heavy rains fall, they flood large areas and then evaporate so quickly that they are of little help in cultivation. Further inland, the climate changes, winters average 4 degrees to 6 degrees Celsius, with considerable frost and occasional snow on the massifs, summers average 26 degrees to 28 degrees Celsius. In the Sahara Desert, temperatures range from minus 10 degrees to 34 degrees Celsius, with extreme highs of 49 degrees Celsius. There are daily variations of more than 44 degrees Celsius. Winds are frequent and violent. Rainfall is irregular and unevenly distributed. For those wishing to travel to this country, summer temperatures are high throughout the country, particularly in the south where it is very dry and very hot. During this time, road travel is difficult and air travel prone to delays because of sandstorms. Northern cities have high humidity, while those along the coast are cooled by sea breezes. In the winter, the oases of the far south are pleasant and attract many visitors. The desert temperature drops dramatically at night. North of the Sahara, temperatures are very mild from September to May and very little between day and night. South of the Sahara, temperatures are pleasant from October to April, but there are great variations between day and night. Coastal towns are prone to storms from the sea. Rainfall is relatively low throughout the country, and in the far south, it is virtually unknown. More than three-fourths of the country is ethnically Arab though most Algerians are descendants of ancient Amazigh groups who mixed with various invading peoples from the Arab Middle East, Southern Europe, and Sub-Saharan Africa. Arab invasions in the 8th and 11th centuries brought only limited numbers of new people to the region, but resulted in the extensive Arabization and Islamization of the indigenous Amazigh population. Some one-fifth of Algerians now consider themselves Amazigh, of whom the Kabbalah Mazayan, occupying the mountainous area east of Algiers, form the largest group. Other Amazigh groups are the Shawiya, who live primarily in the Oz Mountains, the Mzabites, a sedentary group descended from the 9th century IB followers of Abd ul-Ram ibn Rustam, who inhabit the northern edge of the desert, and the Tuareg nomads of the Sahara Nahaga region. Nearly all the European settlers mainly French, Italian, and Maltese nationals, who formed a sizable minority in the colonial period, have left the country. Despite efforts to modernize Algerian society, the pull of traditional values remains strong. Whether in the city or countryside, the daily life of the average Algerian is permeated with the atmosphere of Islam, which has become identified with the concept of an autonomous Algerian people, and of resistance to what many Algerians perceive as a continued Western imperialism. Practiced largely as a set of social prescriptions and ethical attitudes, Islam in Algeria has more characteristically been identified with supporting traditional values than serving a revolutionary ideology. In particular, the influential Muslim clergy has opposed the emancipation of women, Algerians traditionally consider the family, headed by the husband, to be the basic unit of society, and women are expected to be obedient and provide support to their husbands. As in most parts of the Arab world, men and women in Algeria generally have constituted two separate societies, each with its own attitudes and values. Daily activities and social interaction normally take place only between members of the same gender. Marriage in this milieu is generally considered a family affair rather than a matter of personal preference, and parents typically arrange marriages for their children, although this custom is declining as Algerian women take on a greater role in political and economic life. Some women continue to wear veils in public, because traditionally minded Algerian Muslims consider it improper for a woman to be seen by men to whom she is not related. 
The practice of veiling has in fact increased since independence, especially in urban areas, where there is a greater chance of contact with non-relatives. Algerian cuisine, like that of most North African countries, is heavily influenced by Arab, Amazi, Turkish, and French culinary traditions. Couscous, a semolina-based pasta customarily served with a meat and vegetable stew, is the traditional staple. Although Western-style dishes, such as pizza and other fast foods, are popular, and Algeria imports large quantities of foodstuffs, traditional products of Algerian agriculture remain the country's best-liked. Mutton, lamb, and poultry are still the meat dishes of choice, favorite desserts rely heavily on native-grown figs, dates, and almonds and locally produced honey, and couscous, and unleavened bread accompany virtually every meal. As is the case in the Middle East, strong, sweet Turkish-style coffee is the beverage of choice at social gatherings, and mint tea is a favorite. Algeria is classified as an upper-middle-income country by the World Bank. Algeria's currency is the Algerian dinar. The economy remains dominated by the state, a legacy of the country's socialist post-independence development model. In recent years, the Algerian government has halted the privatization of state-owned industries and imposed restrictions on imports and foreign involvement in its economy. These restrictions are just starting to be lifted off recently, although questions about Algeria's slowly diversifying economy remain. Algeria has struggled to develop industries outside hydrocarbons in part because of high costs and an inert state bureaucracy. The government's efforts to diversify the economy by attracting foreign and domestic investment outside the energy sector have done little to reduce high youth unemployment rates or to address housing shortages. The country is facing a number of short-term and medium-term problems, including the need to diversify the economy, strengthen political, economic, and financial reforms, improve the business climate, and reduce inequalities amongst regions. Why not check out this playlist for more informative and educational videos about the African continent? Remember to like, share, and subscribe to Positive Africa for more. Thanks for watching, stay positive and see you in the next one.